And with that chat, let's get into Donation Deck Thursday. So the first deck that we have here is being brought to us by Veterno, and this is kind of, I guess the, the best way to describe it would be dredgeless dredge. So the the goal here is we have a lot of self-mill enablers. We have Merfolk Secret Keeper that mills four, Supplier mills three, Founding the Third Path mills four, and then Maestro's Charm, which is essentially mill five. You look at the top five, put one into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. So you have those to set up self-mill. You have uh, creatures that come back from the graveyard. So Narcobipa, when it's milled over, one one flyer, and when it's when you when it's milled over, you put it directly into play. You have Prized Amalgam, which comes back whenever another comes back from your graveyard whenever another creature is put into your into play from your graveyard. You have Haunted Dead, which you can spend two mana, discard two cards to return it back, and then Silver Smoke Ghoul, which is a three one that comes back if you gained three or more life. So now there's some cool synergies going on here. So first and foremost, you have Creeping Chill, which when you mill it over, you can exile it from your graveyard to basically drain your opponent for three. They lose three, you gain three. That triggers Silver Smoke Ghoul. Silver Smoke Ghoul coming back also triggers Prized Amalgam, so kind of like a little loop there. You have uh, Haunted Dead, very importantly, can discard cards from your hand. So if you have a Prized Amalgam in hand, you can use Haunted Dead to discard Amalgam from your hand, get back the Haunted Dead, which will trigger the Amalgam. Other cool thing here is Maestro's Charm actually has more than one mode. So the mode of each opponent loses three and you gain three also triggers Silver Smoke Ghoul, which then triggers Prize to Malcolm, so on and so forth. Uh, there's some other cool, weird synergies that may or may not come up. So Witch's Oven creates a food. Now, obviously, you've seen this with Cauldron Familiar before, but there's kind of a cool loop that you can set up with, like, Witch's Oven and Silver Smoke Ghoul, where you can sacrifice the Silver Smoke Ghoul to gain three life, or excuse me, to, to, to get a food, then you can sacrifice the food to gain three life, which will bring back the Silver Smoke Ghoul, which will then also bring back Prize to Malcolm. So there's some really cool synergies going on here, and um, kind of a slightly different take on some self-mill slash dredgeless dredge that we've, we've seen in the past. Most of these lists in the past have used green for stuff like Grizzly Salvage and Seder Wayfinder, but we are playing uh, red as our splash color instead of green for the aforementioned Maestro's Charm, along with a couple of, you know, Rending Volleys in the sideboard and Gigantha. Who could forget Gigantha? But yeah, this deck is really sweet. Um, in the mana base, we have two copies of Ipnu Rivulet, which is pretty cool because you can sacrifice itself to mill yourself for four to get your engines going. And yeah, pretty excited to see how this one goes. <clears throat> yeah, Driven to Despair too. <coughs> Should play New Jace for self-mill combo. Also run... What's the new Jace? Which one? The four mana Jace? Or are you talking about Perfected Mind? Mm. Perfected Mind, I think, is a little bit too slow. Like, this is really the only card in your deck that costs three mana. So you have, like, you know, Silver Smoke Gold and Amalgam. They come back for free. This is effectively a two mana card. This is a zero mana card. So we're only on 20 lands. So I don't think you want to have... I don't think you can really afford more three drops, if that makes sense. All good, JS. All good, buddy. All right, let us begin. Do, 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 do. The cards that you don't want to draw are the stuff that comes back from the graveyard. Like, you don't want to draw Amalgams, Haunted Deads, Creeping Chills, Silver Smoke Ghouls. But if you're drawing a card like Jace, it's kind of fine because you can mill yourself for a bunch. So, you know, you only really don't want to draw the payoffs. Drawing Jace is fine. What's up, Spider? Juicy J. It is time to enter. It's time to juice. Yeah, see, this hand's kind of awkward because we have two Narcomibas and a Haunted Dead in our opener. So you could argue that this is, like, kind of a four-card hand. Um, now, that being said, it's not the worst four-card hand because we have Supplier and Oven to sacrifice it, so we have Mill 6. But I think it's actually better to mulligan here. Um, okay. So this is Mill, mill 3 on 1, Mill 4 on 2. Then we have Cad in case we draw Oven. I think I'm going to keep this back. Probably Blood Crypt. No, I actually want to keep Blood Crypt in case I draw another one mana black card. So I can go one drop in the double one drop. So I'm going to put back the Spire Bluff Canal. I could put back Cauldron Familiar, but keeping this is good if I draw Witch's Oven. So, All right, the Green Menace. Thankfully leading on Oath and not Elf. Pretty happy to see that play Jace as a three of. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think that Jace is that bad of a card, but. 
Elvish Mystique. Oh, wait, they also reveal Gigantha. I just realized that. They're not playing Mono Green at all. Never mind. I hadn't realized they revealed Gigantha. I don't usually see Gigantha and Oath of Nissa in the same deck, though. We'll play a little bit more tomorrow, Johnny. Oh, I see. I I am now aware. I now am aware of what's going on. Okay, did draw the oven. Kind of want to sack the supplier, though. So let's go oven, sack supplier. I guess I didn't need to do this main phase, to be fair. Unfortunate that I can only gain one life here. Because I can get one more Culture Familiar trigger, but I, that's only two life, and that doesn't get back the Silver Smoke Ghoul. So we are just going to pass. I know, right? So yeah, people wondering how the Grixis Archfiend deck did yesterday. Not the best showing, so we went... I played two leagues with Grixis, we went 2-3 in both of them, and then I played the Rogues version, and we went 0-3 drop. Now, one caveat, one thing I will say about the Rogues version, we played against Phoenix twice, and that matchup traditionally for Rogues is abysmal, so that might be too small of a sample size to gather, you know, to gather meaningful information off of that. But the Grixis version, you know, we had some, some middling results with it. And I think that the shell is really good, but we need to work we need to spend a lot of time working on the mana base. Yeah, we can gain three if I untap with the food token. Okay, they're gonna mill three with Tybar. They hit Arona. That can't be good for us. Okay. Chat, I am in danger. I'm in danger. Fibblefip is so based. Unbelievably based. Unfathomably based. Can you say Fibblefip ten times fast? I'm not even gonna try. I know I can't. I don't think I'm going to get back the cat here. Not a lot of reason to. Another Witch's Oven. Uh, okay, that actually triggers the ghoul by itself, so I can go Founding Oven and not have to sack Food Token, which is nice. So let's Founding first and Mill 4. The new Halfling Mana Dark Cloven Impact in Modern. Hmm. Potentially? I think that it, you know what? I think it could be really good in Yawgmoth giving you kind of an uncounterable Yawgmoth. I could be wrong, but... Yeah, I think we're just going to be a little bit too slow here. So we go sack food, bring back familiar, do the dance, sack cat, bring back food, bring back cat, trigger that... And then I'm doing this main phase so I can gain three to trigger the Silver Smoke Ghoul. I guess I could have just done it on their turn, but... Uh, yeah. So we get back Ghoul Amalgam. I mean, that was a decent turn, but... Like, this is my turn three, you know? Which is... It's not bad for what it is. Yeah, there's been a lot of people posting on Twitter. Their list and stuff. Like, let's see if I can find... The one list that I think looked the most impressive to me was Jesse's... Let's see if I can find Jesse's list. Do, do, do. Yeah, here it is. So this list looked really good. Basically, Jesse decided, I think, and I think she's right. She cut the the one mana cantrips. So Blood Tithe, the Fatal Push Thoughtseize is good. She went up to three Appraiser, four Fable, just max out on Dig. I'm still not sure about the mana base. Like four Pathway, three Fable Passage, and Basics seems like kind of a kind of a bit too much, but. I really like the idea of cutting consider, keeping harvester, four dig, up on appraiser, no bone crusher. Like I like a lot of those numbers. So time will tell. Yeah, Corpus Appraiser was really good for us yesterday. Yeah, I really, really just despise pathways. Okay, so what am I doing with charm? I guess milling. Go blue, red, black. Oh. <laughs> okay. I mean, sure, I guess. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> uh, just take nine. Uh, is it good enough? I don't know. Maybe not. They have Gigantha in hand. They're at seven. They're so close to dead. Because they block here, block here, take three, go to four, and then I can deal them two. All right. Well, I'll send with everything, I think. They do have to trade off the Kinnon for whatever that's worth. Somebody clip that. Just milling three creeping chills. Somebody's got to clip that. 
That was pretty good. Yeah, we're, we're Grixis Burn now. Mm, if you do this, you die. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> Gotta trade off the Ginnon. Alright, so they're at four. And then we just do this and get back the Silver Smotes. Alright, well, uh, if I die, I die, but we have them dead on our turn. Open the magic category on Switch. Okay. Uh, noted. Let's see. What's up, Eterno? Eterno, you missed the... Uh, we, we cast Maestro's Charm and build over three Creeping Chills. Bro, what the hell? What is this? This is the Magic the Gathering category. Uh... Huh? Bro. What the fuck? What the hell? Wait, am I on here? Hold on. Are we racing? Are we playing a racing game that I didn't know about? Oh, we are! Chat, look, it's us! Chat, we're playing racing games! I just lost it. Look, let's go! <laughs> it all looks cooler than Moto. Kinda, yeah. Just like, what is going on right now? What the hell? <clears throat> Alright, mill three. Everybody chat, spam wicked. Harn the Great Creator. Uh, well, I should probably respond to this. Uh, do this. And I guess do this. And let Karn resolve. Okay. Yeah, the VTuber thumbnails, those are pretty good. Why aren't we playing a racing game? That is a good question. I mean, we're kind of racing in this game, right? They're at four life. Does that count? Does that count as racing? I think it does. Mm-mm-mm. That is so hilarious. I need to tweet that out. I gotta tweet that out now. Hold, please. Pause, champ. Hold, please. Right. Tweet has been sent. <coughs> Where can I post the clip so you have it? Uh, you can just post the link in chat, JS. I want to go fast. Okay. I'm another Tyvar. Was this the uh, the creeping chill clip? Mmm. Look at that. <laughs> Pretty good. Why not? Yeah, you can watch the clip by Tepreterno, because JS so graciously clipped it for us. Atraxa? What the deuce? What the deuce? Atraxa jump scare, literally. Uh, sure. Okay. I'm still dead to Helix. How have they not found a Helix by now? Am I playing Grixis Sack? Kind of, sort of, but not really. It's like, it's more like a Dredge deck than a Sacrifice deck. What can they get with Karn? They're getting Amber, which untaps Rona. Did, did they, does that mean they found the Helix? They may have found the Helix. Well, they get one more look at least. They've had a lot of looks at Helix. I'm very surprised they haven't found it. <laughs> okay, they get another look. Jesus. They actually get two more because they can go loot and then get back the run over Tyvar. They're getting a lot of looks at Helix. Yeah. Well, actually, no, because now if they find Helix, they cannot untap the Rona, right? I cannot believe I won that game. Holy shit. How did they brick? Okay, so what do we want against their deck? Dispute seems pretty good-ish. It doesn't counter Tyvar or Karn, but it is good against Rona and Kinnon. Vitality is awkward because it doesn't kill Rona. Volley is, again, same thing. Good against Kinnon and Rona, but not good against Karn and Tyvar. So I have a lot of cards that are extremely situational. Silent Gravestone. What what would you want Silent Gravestone against Vaterna? There's not a lot of stuff that targets the graveyard, right? Which is losing it. What do you mean? What's happening now? What's going on? Mm. The screen's like bugging out. Oh no. Mm, seems like we're good on yeah, the bitrate's fine. The stream should be stable. Strip my stream is fine? Okay. Yeah, I think it's just Twitch, right? I know, I, I saw that too, Joe. I tweeted that. That was pretty funny. <clears throat> yeah, Twitch is Twitch is having some problems. Shocker, I know. 
Wait, so you're telling me that, that Twitch is not a perfect website? What the deuce? You kidding me? Oh, Grease Fang, sure. Okay. Uh, what are we boarding against them? So we have to decide between Volley, Brutality. I don't think I want Leyline. I think it's some number of these cards. Um, the only problem is I don't really know what I'm supposed to cut. Like, if you think of the deck as enablers, like, you don't want to cut a ton of payoffs. It's like enablers, payoffs. You can probably shave maybe, like, a ghoul and a narcomoeba and try just two volleys because they are a little bit more mana efficient and they're better on the draw. I think. Cyborg is focused on my store, not general. Oh, sure, sure, sure. No, you're good, Victor. No, you're good. I mean, I I, I think I changed a little bit of the sideboard, but... Oven Cat is what you usually cut. Yeah, that might make more sense against Karn, too. Keeping Oven in against Karn is a little bit sketchy. All right, this hand's too bad. This hand is good. Back Narcomoeba. Why do we have K-Command? It's for the Grandy matchups. All right, I want to go back and see if the <clears throat> if the racing stuff is still up there. <clears throat> all right, now it's mostly gone. Yeah, now it's all gone. It's back to normal stuff. That was so weird. I got a picture of it. Look at this. <laughs> this is what the Magic the Gathering category looked like for a second. It was so funny. Gotta go fast. Okay, so I think I'm supposed to go Supplier on 1 into Founding Secret Keeper, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Two Cauldron Familiars and a Prize to Malcolm. Alright, well, it could be really good. Rona. We have to defeat the Rona virus. Chapter sent Alright, Chapter 1... Deep, 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 deep. Need to go deeper. Uh-oh. Maybe it was better to go Witch's Oven there, because I have a Cauldron Familiar. So I could have went Oven, Sack, Supplier. Get back Familiar, which would have gotten back the prize to Malcolm. That might have been better. It appears that we might just be dead on turn three, so good beats. Good beats either way. Yeah, it, it is nice to get the Founding going as quickly as possible, but... You know, it's the argument of that versus putting more pressure into play. So it's close. Yeah, still dead to Helix. Still dead to Helix. Actually, we're not, right? Because they can't... No, they can untap with Tyvar. Yeah, so we are dead to Helix. Yeah, Helix, untap with Tyvar, make infinite blue mana. Uh, and then they eventually find Karn. Well, wait, no. This isn't technically lethal, right? Oh, they can float black and green and then get back Tyvar, mill their whole deck. Uh, that's good enough, right? No, because they can just float black and green with the Mox Amber. Yeah. I mean, I could make them do it, but we're, we'd be here for like 15 minutes and I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to assume that they know what their deck does. I'm just, I'm good with that, you know? I've seen enough. I've seen enough. Here's my Gigantha. Mm. So this is turn one supplier, turn two nothing, turn three charm. Charm is technically interaction. I feel like we need a little bit of a more explosive hand in a matchup like this. So I'm going to ship this. Yeah, this is better, right? Yeah, this is way better. It doesn't have red mana, but we can go turn one supplier, turn two, turn two secret keeper and oven. Sack this and mill seven. This hand could go pretty brazy. That is not the card that I wanted to draw. All right, let's go deeper. Uh, okay. This could be good. Attack first. Go to 18. Sack this. Get this back. And then we have familiar up. Okay, all right. So familiar, put them to 17, attack for six. If I find a red source, we're kind of cooking with gas. <clears throat> that is, in fact, a red source. Did we just kill the Rona? Ah, uh, 
This is tough. So I can go kill the Rona. Or I could just dome them for three and get back Silver Smoke Ghoul. They're at 17. But I think that I have enough power in play to beat them. I mean, the nice thing about killing the Rona is it turns off Mox Amber. Yeah, I think I have to kill the Rona. I think I just have to. So the nice thing about Maestro's Charm, it's a little bit... It's, it's versatile, you know? I don't want to give them loots. If I'm going to kill the Rota, I'm doing it main phase. This is a two-turn clock. Tyvar was the downside, for sure. Tyvar is definitely the downside there. <clears throat> Killing Rota next turn, you can food for Ghoul. Yeah, yeah, I can food next turn. Um, so I guess we kill Tyvar and deal them four, right? Kill Tyvar, attack you. Might as well attack with the familiar. I mean, I'm going to sack it anyways, but... Okay, sack this. They go to six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They... Oh, no, they milled Mox Amber. They didn't discard Mox Amber. Okay, there's the Atraxa. So now they go to six. And now I can go sacrifice food. Yeah, this is my end step, so I have to do this now. I mean, isn't sacrifice food get back ghoul worse than just going shockland amalgam hold up familiar because this is more damage right or i guess i don't even need the shock in that case yeah i think this is just better uh i guess i'll hold the land for haunted dead purposes because now this puts them to five and even if they chump block an amalgam i still have lethal <clears throat> Uh, okay, Karn is fine. We still beat Karn, right? Unless, oh, they can Karn for Mox Amber if they have Helix rolled up. Mm, good beats. We tried. We tried. They're not even looting, which means they definitely have Helix. One turn away, chat. Needed one more draw step. Uno mas draw step. That was pretty close, though. We put up a good fight. All right, surely we'll get at least one match win with this deck, right? This deck is cool as hell. I love it. I'm, I'm having a good time. Okay, so... Um, again, so you want to look at your opening hand based on... Uh, most of the... Like, 90% of the time, these cards in your opening hand are bricks, so this is effectively a mulligan to five with only one enabler, so you typically will mulligan these hands. Um... This is a mulligan to six with only one enabler, but kind of two enablers slow. I still think it's a keep on six because of the rivulet. What's up, Ride or Die? Hey, anybody? Can anybody hear me? When was the second one? Uh, I think the second one was like February or something. The second one was won by BCS, aka Bailey. He was playing uh, Abzan Company. The VOD's up on YouTube if you want to check it out. Yeah, Twitch is having some weird problems today. I don't really know what's going on. Failure. yeah. Hmm. Sus. Actually, that was bad. I should have played the uh, the canal because I'm gonna play this on three. What's up, Micah? Yeah, this deck is sweet. Copper coat Vanguard. I'm gonna chump block with supplier. Try and hit something good. Those are not good. <laughs> All right, well, I have to do this main phase, too, because of Silver Smuggle, I think. Okay, we hit a Creeping Chill. We don't have a Silver Smuggle, though. Hmm. Not good. Not the best. Things are not going as planned. If you were if you were not aware, this is not, this is not how we planned it out. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, that's just hilarious. Too good. Obviously draw the Silver Smoke Ghoul there. Could have just milled it over last turn. Yeah. I do really enjoy drawing Creeping Chill. It's my favorite pastime. Easiest block of my life? Why are they trading their Copper Code Vanguard? What's going on here? I'm at eight. Need a good draw step here. Self-Mill Enabler. Um... 
Okay, well, I guess we go to six and play Haunted Dead. Have some chump blockers, and then the Haunted Dead can get back stuff next turn. Maybe? <clears throat> Tainted Indulgence. Mm, I mean, if you wanted to filter your draw step, you're probably just better off playing Fable, right? And honestly, maybe Fable is just good in this deck. Because Fable gets rid of Haunted Deads and Prized Amalgams in hand. Actually, what about what do you think about that, Veturno? Have you ever tried Fable in this deck? Otherworldly Gaze. Yeah, that one's not bad either. Bro, can I can I not draw these these uh these bricks? Okay, so discard these two. Trigger this. Get an Archimeda in play. Get back prize to Malcolm. Yeah, this isn't even close to good enough. I have to, like, double chump block. Well, lose, you'll never win. Yeah, I can't even double block one of the Vanguards. I don't really think I have any outs here, but... I know, we need the uh, hashtag sponsored racing wheel. Yeah, the other modes are, are pretty good. All right, Rending Volley coming in. Illness bad, Brutality bad, Fate the Swarm bad. So I think it's just Volley. Can shave like one of in one cat, call it a day. No, it's a DreamHack shirt. I got it I got it at DreamHack, by the way. They had some really good merch when I went there. It was pretty cheap too. I think I got like a, a shirt and a pair of sweatpants for like 60 bucks. Relatively cheap. Yeah, I don't know if you knew this chat, but we are officially a racing game simulator. Chat spam wicked, please and thank you. All right, play first. Giganta. Secret Keeper, Haunted Dead, Bunch of Lands. No, I'm good with that. Mm. Yeah, that's not going to cut it either. We need at least two lands. Oh, come on. <laughs> These hands are so bad. Uh, All right, I guess we keep this. Put back this, this this and we go deep 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 three lands and a cauldron familiar huh this is the ultimate gamba deck you really need to hit very very well on your mills yeah it's possible you need more enablers it is entirely possible we need more enablers go chapter two here go here Okay, so I got an Arkabiba. Hmm, not good enough. Oh, all right, all right, I forgot about that card. Yeah, you win. So you... Paid subscriptions and gifteds and primes don't count. I know, it's really weird. I don't understand why gifteds... I guess they, I guess they don't count gifteds because they're not reoccurring paid subscriptions or something like that, but... So I'm close. My my split is like it's a little bit more than a third is paid subs. So we're a little bit under that threshold right now. But the nice thing is if you hit the threshold, so they're they're innate they're starting the program in October, but if you hit the thresholds between June, July, and August and September, they're gonna in, they're gonna automatically enroll you into the program in October, which is pretty cool. So as long as we can get to the thresholds. Yeah, I should. I've been thinking about doing a subathon anyways. Now is probably a good time. I guess I should have played Black Leaf Flips there. <clears throat> Ooh, double creeping chill, huh? Need to maintain the 350. So what happens is once you get to the 350 threshold, they lock you into the 70-30 split for 12 months, even if you fall below the 350, which is really nice. So if we if we get to the threshold, even if we fall below it, we're still locked in for 12 months. Hmm. Deep. Need to go deeper. Deep, deep, deep. It's gonna burn them out. Gifted subs not counting. Yeah, it's really weird. I understand why primes don't count because there's already, like, they're already taking a cut off of the prime subs anyways. But gifted's not counting really doesn't make any sense. Three fifty one for three. Yeah, you need it for three months consecutive, and that locks you in. And then even if you fall below it after that, then then you're still locked into it. Uh, okay, let's go here. 
did hit a Haunted Dead, which is kind of perfect because I can discard Silver Smoke Ghoul and get it back. Because I triggered Creeping Chill this turn. Not going to attack with Cat. We need to find an oven here. I don't I don't think that is yeah, I don't think that's possible. I'd have to <laughs> I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna bring that up. Just let's just say that is not a possibility. Uh I could probably send with everything, right? I guess. They trade for ghoul, they trade for cat, they go to seven. Play another ghoul. This is fine. Alright, hard cast, baby. Beat down time. Unfortunate that they're playing white mana, which means they probably have rest in peace in their sideboard. <clears throat> How close am I? I'm, like, relatively close. I don't know the exact number, but I'm probably somewhere in the ballpark of, like... Well, I guess I'm not that close. I think I'm, like, 2 to 220. Oh, they're just dead, right? Uh, Drain you for 3. So you... I think the bot might be down. I was having some issues with the bot earlier. Let's see if the deck command works. Yeah, the deck command works, but I don't know why the card command's not working. It's weird. Okay, so model white Yorion. Let's uh, correct our mistake and bring in Feed the Swarm this time for rest in peace. Because, uh, fuck that card. Don't want Coligan's command, don't want Leyline. I'm not even really sure that I want Rending Volley. I understand they're a model white deck, but a lot of their cards just replace themselves when they enter the battlefield. And they're not really good rending volley targets. So I think I am not going to do that. Who let him cook? I spent oh, we spent a little bit too much time in the oven on this one. Literally in the oven. I'm actually stuck in the oven. Jack, can anybody help me get out of the oven? I'm stuck. <clears throat> so I kinda wanna go familiar on one into founding Venture deeper on two. That makes sense. Need to add a 70 plus command for this new perk. Yeah, I know, right? All right, not a rest in peace, thankfully. We found the out. The issue is we have to put a bunch of stuff into our graveyard this turn. So if, you know, if they draw rest in peace, then it's still not going to be great for us. We milled a ghoul. There we go. Volcanic Spite to put cards back in. Well, Volcanic Spite specifically is kind of bad because it, like, you put Prize to Malcolm on the bottom, but you don't have a way to shuffle it back in. So it, it doesn't really accomplish what you want it to do. Aha! Uh, um, do I go Chapter 1 and just feed the Swarm their Skyclave Apparition and make a 2-2? Two -two? Like, I kind of eventually want to kill this anyways... And they would have played Rest in Peace if they had it. Yeah, let's just do that. And I want to kill Skyclave to both keep them off Devotion. And again, I'm going to eventually kill it because of the Orion regardless. <clears throat> Deck needs Brainstorm. I think Fable would go a long way. Like, I don't know if you would want to cut Maestro's Charm entirely for Fable, but you could maybe trim one copy of this, shave on the Cat Oven stuff, and play three or four Fables. Fable makes a ton of sense. Oh, we don't have basics, do we? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, no. Not like this. Alright, alright. Drew land, Drew land, Drew land. Hmm. Yeah, those aren't great cards. Those are not great cards. So I actually just can't do anything. One of my red for charm. I changed up the mana base a little bit, too. Because I think the mana base that you sent me didn't quite have enough red sources for charm, so I, I added a couple more. Well, uh, I can at least kill the yellow Schnorn. Because I kind of have to take a million damage, but... Everybody in chat take five. Minus five, kick W. We have two cards in hand. Okay. Get a planes. Pick up your round, maybe. Farmhand. Mm -mm. Alright, untap land, please. Mm, it's not an untap land, but it's not awful. Let's play supplier first. Uh, 
yeah, let that resolve. Oh, I should have played the oven. I messed up sequencing. Yeah, this was dumb. So what I was supposed to do is play oven, then play... Well, I guess it still doesn't matter, right? Because it's two separate triggers. But I guess I could go resolve the first supplier trigger, and then if I hit Narc Amoeba, that trigger on the stack, tap... Yeah, yeah, I messed that up. I messed that up. Yeah, that was the line. Supplier trigger resolve, hit Narc Amoeba, Narc Amoeba trigger on the stack, sack the supplier, then I could hit a Malcolm. Yeah. That was a mistake. No, not last night, Tom, bro. I was a little bit busy last night, but maybe I'll try and play some tonight. We're going to play some more Archfiend tomorrow, too, so. Wedding announcement. Cat up and out for Fable and Gaze, maybe the play. Yeah, I could see that. Play, like, one or two mana confluences. It might not be that bad. All right, now what? Mm, maybe I shouldn't have played that land. Hmm. So, my options here are discard both cards in my hand, get back dead, which get back, which gets back two amalgams. Or I could go... How many silver? I only have one silver smote. Because I can go Maestro's Charm, drain you for three, get back silver smote, which gets back amalgam on their turn. Or I could high roll the Maestro's Charm and just mill five. What am I looking for if I mill five? Looking for specifically... Creeping Chill, which I think we've only hit... We've hit none so far. I think we have to get lucky on the mill. We got a Gamba. Well, I don't want to discard the Maestro's Charm. I could just discard next turn, right? But maybe that's too slow. Uh, okay. This isn't too bad. So now we get back Narc Amoeba and Amalgam and Ghoul. Okay. Not terrible. Could be worse. They go to 12. Send Narco Amoeba. We go to 11. We get back both of these. We can probably just shove next turn. We can drain them for one with Cat. Consensus on Esper Legend Fang. Well, we're playing that deck today. That deck is that deck's in the queue for today, so we haven't played it yet. Field of Ruin. Okay, no basics. It's actually pretty nice that they're shuffling our deck for us because we had a creeping chill on the bottom. Uh, shit. No, oh, that sucks. All right, all right. Could still just kind of send everything, right? Because they have the architect. Play no basics specifically to incentivize them to feel this so we could shuffle our amalgams back in. Giga Chad. It's the smartest thing I've ever heard anybody in Twitch chat say. Oh, yeah, no, that's going to be the third deck tonight, Rusty. Lay down arms. Uh, I could sack it. Do I have a cauldron familiar in the graveyard already? It's unfortunate that I don't. I still think it's worth sacking the amalgam, right? Yeah. I can't get it back this turn, but next turn I can. I'll attack. They may block cap. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I could have sent the cat last turn. They probably would have blocked the cat that I could have had in the graveyard. Yeah, that was probably a mistake. All right, let's mill four first. Let's see if we can hit some chills. Chill, bro. All right, we did hit a chill. So that's going to get back the one silver smoke ghoul. They're at eight. This puts them to six. Then five. Then three. Then two. They're pretty close to dead, right? Actually, the familiar is a free attack, right? Because if they block it, I can just get it back. Yeah, the familiar is just a free point of damage here. So let's attack with those three. Have I messed around with, is it Convoke yet? Is it Convoke? What would you play blue for? We tried a mono red Convoke deck that had City on Fire. Uh, it was not that great, but it was pretty cool. Third Path Iconoclast. Oh, because then you also have, um, you also get to play Meeting of Minds, too. It's not completely unreasonable. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Well, we played, like, a blue-red Pyromancer deck. I wouldn't necessarily classify it as a Convoke deck, the deck that we played, but it was, like, four Pyromancer, four Iconoclast, and then Meeting of Minds. I think we had Balmor, stuff like that.
So we have played a little bit of Is It Pyromancer. Okay, so they can Yorion to blink a bunch of shit. We can put them to two, we can put them to four with the familiars. Three, excuse me. And then they go to two. We go to two on our turn. So they're if we find a land and we can Ipnu into another creeping chill, they die. Okay, so get Amalgam back. Resolve that. Get back the Yorion stuff. Draw a card, get a land. What about Iconoclast with Improvise? Mm, what's the best Improvise card? Probably the Draw 3 Reverse Engineer. Go to 4. Go to 3. Yeah, there's the Demon too, but then your mana base is kind of sketchy, because you have to be Grixis. Maybe that's fine. Uh, exile something that I can't cast. I'm just gonna go Spire Bluff Canal plus Rivulet, and then if we hit Creeping Chill, they die. Creeping Chill. We got two left in deck. Hmm. That is not a Creeping Chill. So they are at effectively two. But they have enough blockers, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I can just attack with both Narcobibas. They can only block one. Yeah. Our chain of redemption is not working for anybody else. Did you re did you redeem something? What did you redeem, Ren or Die? Because I don't see it in the queue that you redeemed anything. It won't work. Let me see. Let me check something. Um... That is annoying, because they can blow up the oven. It might be really hard to get this last point of damage in. Let me try something. Give me a sec. Uh, request queue. Yeah, it's showing every everything appears to be fine on my, on my end. But there's nothing in the queue. They need a flyer. Oh, because we have two Narcomoebas, right? We put them to one, and then we have two Narcomoebas. Yeah. Because they currently only have one flyer. No, they can gain life, right? Yeah, they can just gain life. <sighs> so close. If they didn't have the Loran, I could have went block sack to not give them life. I know that Twitch was having some problems earlier, so maybe it's maybe it's specifically related with Twitch. They didn't wait, they didn't activate. Why? Why didn't they activate? Okay. I mean, still probably dead. Yeah. Got a four. Fuck. Hmm. So, what do we even... Ha we have to draw another founding and mill over a creeping chill, right? It's probably our only out. That's not gonna do it. Um... Guess I have one more draw step, maybe. No, because they can just flip this. All right, let's go to game three. Game three. That was a close one. It was a really close one. We almost got there, chat. Almost got there. Do you believe, Belfi? I don't. I'm not sure that you do. I'm not convinced that you do. Running back next week, but Thursday with Fable and Gaze. I'd be down. Ah. No. Too many bricks. Too many bricks, too many bricks. Oh my god, these hands are bad. <laughs> well, I guess it wasn't meant to be, huh? Uh, I think I keep this and hope to draw a black source? Put back these three. Alright, surely I'll draw a black source, right? Classic. That's not a black source. You see, the problem with this deck is it's just too good. That is the problem with the deck. Not a rest in peace. Ooh. Uh, okay. Three power, baby. What's up? We put we put two chills in the bottom, right? I think. Rude. Okay. Yeah, we didn't mill over any lands, which is good. Black source. Fuck. 
go. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. We've won two games so far, which is possibly more than I would have expected to win, so. Deck is... It's showing a little bit of promise. It could be worse, you know? Alright, I've seen enough. We've won two games so far. I really think that if you add Fable to this deck, I don't know if you want to cut the Oven Familiar entirely, but maybe go down to, like, maybe go down to two Oven, two Familiar, shave a Charm, and maybe cut, like, the second Haunted Dead and play four Fables. I think that would go a long way. You probably want a 21st land, too. Lander, but we do have Supplier and Secret Keeper. Uh, I'm going to keep this on five, because if I draw a land, it's pretty good. But, you know. We also might not draw a land, and I'm okay with that. Should I buy some uh should I buy some LOTR collector boxes, chap? Fuck off. Fuck off. Don't burn the cat. Well, if I cut the cat, then it's fine, right? There's no cat to burn. Don't get you baited. I know. I'm I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted. But what if? What if? What if you pull it? Don't burn the goblin. Don't burn the zombie. It's really hard to burn zombies though. They're kind of already they're kind of already dead. Your turn. What? Yeah, what if it's a zombie cat? I mean, that's kind of what happens, right? With Witches Oven Cauldron Familiar. You put the cat into the oven and then it comes back as a zombie. Is that not the lore? I feel like it should be. Cauldron Familiar should have a should have new text on it that says uh, it enters the battlefield from your graveyard as a zombie in addition to its other types. I think that would make a lot of sense. Just saying. Your turn. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> but they're attacking? This is like easiest double block of my life, right? It's mill six, or trade for a Thoughtseize and still mill, trade for a Fatal Bush and still mill six. I guess they probably have Trespasser and that's why they're doing this. Come on. <laughs> the, what are these mills? Come on, man. What are these mills? Uh, apparently today was not a good day to gamble. Today was not a good day to, to, to hit the button. He's playing four color Lutri. Why is why is he wasting his time? He knows you know he's not gonna play four color Lutri. Seems like not the best use of your PT testing time. I mean, to each their own, but what would you think his team would say if he showed up to a team meeting and he was like, guys, I broke it. Four color Lutri. Ride or die, you figured it out. Let me get some Drakes in chat for Ride or Die. Figuring out how to use the uh Figuring out how to use the, the redemptions. Mm. I haven't milled a single good card this entire game, by the way. Can we, how can we add a fifth? Yeah, there's there's not enough colors in this deck, kid. Throw it back in the oven and come back when you have a real deck. My opponent is uh, taking quite a bit of time here. Well, since they're taking their sweet time, I would like to use this time to thank our new sponsor of the stream, Cool Stuff Inc. If you want to check them out, exclamation point cool stuff to get 5% off of your next order. Sleeves, supplies, cards, singles, everything. Go check them out. Coolstuffinc.com. Promo code Doom for 5% off your next order. Add Gary to that fable. Doom. All right. I mean, if they're going to take this long, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back, chat. Bathroom break. Two seconds, chat. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. Must have put the fables on the stack right as I left, right? Okay. Um do 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 you in. Cool. So much DBZ, what's up, buddy? DBZ's gonna go third, if you're cool with that. DBZ's deck looks really sick. Okay, what do you want to get? Rakdos Sacrifice. AKA Sakdos. Sac D's. It's not really a lot here, to be honest. Uh, 
probably don't want most if of any of this stuff just because cat oven not the best against mayhem devil mm, not sure that i want ley lines it does shut off cauldron familiar and it shuts off croaksa kind of no it, it does shut off croaksa but hmm could bring in feed the swarm to kill mayhem devil probably okay um maybe i do like this and keep in one oven one cat just as misers okay let's try that Two ley line is the perfect number of ley lines. I messed around with Thrill Seeker for a little bit in Rectosac. It's good, but the problem with Thrill Seeker is it's more three drops. So Thrill Seeker, to me, felt like it wasn't really helping you in your bad matchups. And it makes your deck a little bit clunkier. So I wasn't a huge fan of it, but it is a pretty powerful card. Push with Oven. Oh, you're saying we could play Push because we can turn on Revolt with Oven. Yeah, that's fair. I could see that. Yeah, I, I think I might have made like one or two very small changes to DPC players list, but I will show you the deck list. This one is, it's so sweet. Like there's a lot of cool interactions where you have, so basically you have Rona and Emery to mill over slash discard Parhelion. And then you also have Rafine, which does that. And then you have a legend package with Amber. You have Amber, which turns on Emery. And then you have like... Emery, which rebuys Chariot, that's kind of cool. Emery also rebuys Sky Sovereign if they kill it. So there's a lot of cool, like, different synergies going on here. And uh, I'm pretty excited to play this one. I, ch I think I cut the third Shieldred for the fourth Chariot. And then I moved the Shieldred to the sideboard. I think that's really the only change I made. But yeah, this one's really cool. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Alright, opponent, what are you doing? You've, you've, uh, you've spent enough time taking a shit. I think it's time to play Magic now. What do you think, chap? You think our opponent's taking enough time taking a shit? It's got to be the biggest shit of their lifetime. A fellow greaser. Where you at? What can we do in between while we're waiting for our opponent, who is clearly not here? We could show the other decks. All right, so this was the Grease Fang Legends deck that we were talking about, and then the, the other deck, which is uh, interesting. Oh, they're back. Woo! Uh, keep, I guess. I guess hand's fine. It's awkward because we have Narcomoeba and Ghoul, but I do have an Enabler, and I have a Ley Line, so I'm going to keep it. I'm going to lead on the Enabler in case they have Thoughtseize, because I don't want them Thoughtseizing my only Enabler. Uh, sure. Then I finished the Edison deck. No, uh, so today I got a, another package came in. It was uh, the Econs and a Bryonic, but I'm still missing I'm still missing Ryza's, um, Ryza's Caius's... And some other extra deck stuff. But I got most of it. Any more testing with Blue Black? No, we spent most of our time last night playing the Grixis version. We didn't really get around to playing the Blue Black version yesterday. But we're gonna we'll test a little bit out with the Blue Black version at some point. Probably tomorrow. I got some ideas. Uh can we ever beat this hearse? Probably not. Yeah, let's just not waste anybody's time. All right, let's do an 05 prediction. Haven't had one of these in a while, but... All right, 05. A Sultai Archfiend combo to get the enchantment search. I really I really don't think that I that you need, like, a ton of tutors. Because that's... It seems like people want to play Sultai for specifically commune with the gods. And I just don't think you need that. What's up, Mikey? El Goblino. This hand's really good. I don't know if it's good enough, but it's really good. Yeah, commune and vessel. I don't like I don't think that's what the deck is missing. I don't think it's missing tutors to find combo pieces. Um I think what it's missing is just like good mana and a better mid-range plan. I think that's the that's the biggest key to, to breaking the deck is finding like, if you want to be three colors, figuring out how to make the mana work, and also figuring out what the best, like, quote-unquote, plan B is. Personally, I still think the best plan B is just playing Fable the Mirror Breaker, because that card's busted. But it's it's close, for sure. Uh, go. Maybe I was actually supposed to play it on Chapter 1 there, because then I can go Charm on 3, then Flashback Charm on 4. Even though I have nothing to cast off of the Chapter 1, just slowing it down for a turn might have been better does makes your dig faster it does but like i haven't been like i haven't really felt that the digs were that slow to begin with you know 
Okay, we got a Narcamoeba, which doesn't really do anything. Okay, take two. You know they have Pathway in hand? Hmm. So my options are Maestro's Charm, which can mill five, try to spike a Creeping Chill, or I can go Oven, Sack Narcamoeba, Sack Food, get back two ghouls. Charm is definitely higher upside, but I also might want to use the charm to kill the Chain Whirler. I think I'm going to take the Oven line. Should attack first. What's up, Sneaky? How resilient is the combo itself? Mm, kind of, but not, not particularly. I mean, the nice thing about the combo is we won a lot of games yesterday just with Archfiend beatdowns. Like, it is shocking how quickly Archfiend kills your opponent. Especially in combination with, like, any removal spells. They die very quickly to that. Which is, to me, the best part about playing the combo. Like, you get to threaten a turn... Like, a, you get to threaten a turn 5 kill against decks that don't care about your mid-range plan. But then, when you can't combo off and you're getting Thoughtseize and, and a bunch of this stuff, uh, Archfiend is just a massive threat by itself. So. Reckless Handling. Bro, Reckless... I don't, I don't know what this card does. Fissure Wizard. When the wizard is in fact a fissure. 2 1 ETB discard draw. Banger. Absolute banger. When the wizard is a fissure. Fissure Wizard. Okay, drawing cat is not too bad. And now I think I want to mill five. Probably should maybe attack first. If I attack with both, they trade. Then I can drain them to get back the ghoul, but that's worse than just going familiar, sack, crack, food, get back ghoul that way. So I guess I will... I'm going to mill first, because there's a chance I might not want to attack. Okay, well now I get a free attack. Uh, I'm going to put supplier into my hand, I think. Trigger this. Go to combat, attack for six. If they block, I just get it back, so that's fine. Excuse me. Then if they don't block, I can go Blood Crypt, Supplier, and then Oven, Sack, Ghoul, because the Ghoul will come back anyways. So they go to 8. Shock, play Supplier. Then we go Tap, Oven, Sack, Ghoul. And... Uh, it doesn't matter if I get the Amalgam back now, because I can just get it back on their turn. Oh, there's two Amalgams. That's good. Okay. Oh yeah, not getting back Amalgam is now is not getting back Amalgam now is better if they go like Chain Whirler Death Touch. Because then I I'll keep the Amalgams in play for my turn. <clears throat> the red, white, reckless impulse deck. Yeah, that deck is really good, I think, Mike. I think there's I think there is a really good chance that there is a, a like absurdly good version of that deck out there. It was pretty impressive when I played it. Maybe you run Battle Rage. Ah uh, Battle Rage is a little bit too sus. Cause the idea is your like the Archfiend plan, if you're just going beat down with Archfiend, that's supplemented by just Fable and Harvester, right? Hmm. I think I want to jump block. Do I even want to jump block? I'm actually just gonna take seven, I think. Because I want to keep the cauldron familiar to be able to sack to the oven. A version without Gigantha for the new Urbrask. Oh, the 4-4 four, four, first strike for 4. So what's that? Whenever you cast a spell, you get a red mana or something like that. Okay, they're going to Chain Whirler. Uh, that's fine with me. That doesn't really accomplish that much. I mean, it kind of does. Milled a Haunted Dead. We still have two Silver Smoke Ghouls. Okay... They're at 8 going to 7 off of Familiar. They're not quite dead because they have enough blockers for the Amalgams, but they're close. Close-ish. Yeah, Steamkin's always been super underwhelming. Haunted plus food. Okay, that could be bad for us because now they can kind of go off. They can kind of go off with, like, Horde Master plus Conspicuous Snoop. So get back Amalgams. <laughs> I'm not supposed to draw this card. 
I'm supposed to discard or mill it over. Uh, well... Hmm... They're at seven? Very high likelihood that I am dead. Especially with the battle cry on top. I need a lot of blockers. Right? I need a, I need a ton of blockers. So I can go Creeping Chill, Hard Cast, which only gets back the Silver Smoke Ghouls. They'll think you're probably right. Haunted Dead plus... Plus Sack Food is better. So in that case... This is a free attack. I mean, they're gonna block, but it's a free attack because I'm gonna sack the Amalgam anyways. Because I have to sack something to oven either way to get the food. And this just comes back. I guess maybe sacking this was better. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess sacking this is sacking this is probably better. Food now than have haunted, haunted instant speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go main phase, food, sack this. Uh, crack the food, get back the silver smotes, and then I can haunt it on their turn. All right, they called. <laughs> they called. Damn it, they weren't supposed to call. All right, so now we go sack food, pass, get back two ghouls. Ideally, I want to block with the amalgam in combat. Well... Mm, I don't have that luxury, right? I only have three blockers here. I don't think I have enough blockers to survive. Because they go, yeah, no, I'm just dead. They play Battle Cry, activate, send everything. Block here, block here. That's 4, 7, 10, 14, 16. Yeah, I can't survive. Why not just cast Creeping Chill? Because I want a Haunted Dead. Haunted Dead lets me get back the Amalgam that's in hand. Yeah, we're just dead, though. All right, all right, all right, fine. What's up, Elijah? El Goblino. Illness is not that... They don't... It doesn't do anything, right? They don't make tokens. Uh, volley bad. Brutality, I think, is bad. I guess Brutality can get the three-mana sorcery out of their hand, but I think even if they enter tapped, I still might... Oh, you're saying the, the ghouls, yeah. I would have had enough blockers if those didn't enter tapped, but... I think I might just run it back. My sideboard does not... I don't really have any sideboard cards for this matchup. Brutality on Snoop. I guess Brutality gets Snoop and Call. Could try two Brutalities. Getting Call is pretty big, too. It's finally time to cook again. There you go. Eternal actually submitted a, another donation for next week. We're going to run this back, but I'm gonna we're going to make some changes to this, because I know we're 0-4, which obviously looks bad, but this deck is showing a little bit of promise, so... Sahili Luxier. No, and now that you mention it, I actually totally forgot about that combo. It is certainly one of the combos of all time, but I totally forgot about it. Yeah, I, th I think we can we can make this deck better. I gotta add more lands too. We've, we've gotten mana screw quite a bit today. Twenty is pretty low. Uh, from my understanding, you just make. Wait, what's what's the combo again? You like make a copy of Luxier or something? I can't remember exactly what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's an infinite combo. Hmm. We've also opened a lot of Creeping Chills today. <laughs> Which is not where you want those cards. So, double Secret Keeper and Rivulet. I guess I have to keep this. Uh, I'm more likely to be able to cast Narcomoeba, especially if I sacrifice the Rivulet, so we'll do it this way. Deep, deep, deep. Need to go deeper. Well, that's a pretty good mill if I can find a Creeping Chill. Deeper. <clears throat> Deeper. That is not a creeping chill. Uh, I guess we can play Rivulet here. And then go Cliffs next turn. You get infinite non-creature artifact Planeswalker enter the battlefields. Simply with Lux here, minus targeting itself, copy its own artifact, repeat infinitely, which gives you infinite TPs. Oh yeah, you need, um, what's the one mana artifact? The one that mills. I forget the name of it. Alter of the Brood? Alter of the Brood. The Brood. The Brood. Turn two Fable. Let him cook. Uh, alright. Surely I will mill the Creeping Chill this turn, right? Surely I'll mill the Creeping Chill this turn. That's pretty good, too. So that gets three Amalgams. All right, your turn. We're cooking. Turn three, 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 threes.
Not a bad turn three. I've definitely seen worse. Imagine casting a Fable on turn three when you could just put three prize demogams into play. Couldn't be me. Block. I'll block with my 0-4. We're having a good time, though. That's all that matters. I'm always having a good time. I'm no longer having a good time. Unironically kind of fine, because I just have the Haunted Dead to get him back, so... It's not even that bad. Mm, play this. Creeping Chill, mod check? <coughs> More Silver Smoke Ghouls. All right, go. Revive, and we're doing something. It is ki It is a vibe of sorts. It's not not a vibe. How big can I make this? That's as big as I can make it. Bigger, 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 bigger. I'm just going to put it right here. All right, block with supplier. Oh, it is Menace, right. Uh, all right, block with supplier. Imagine not reading the card. Yeah, oven would be nice. Where are my creeping chills? Mod check creeping chills. Creeping chills? Where are they at? Yeah, reading the card does, in fact, explain the card. Stop! <sighs> Damn it. Man. One doesn't want me to have fun. Rude. Hey, hey, the game's not over yet, all right? We can still win. We can still win, right? We got this, chat. You just gotta believe. Yeah, fuck you. Okay, post-combat, by the way. Love post-combat lords. It is the 0-4 bracket, to be fair. So. Uh... Surely I'll hit a creeping chill, right? I can't miss at this point. I only have 30 cards left in my deck. All right, unironically didn't miss. Kind of sucks that this is going to get Hurst, but we're going to get back at least the Silver Smoke Ghouls. Can send with everything, maybe. Go to 16. I can copy the Horde Master. Definitely send with this and this. Maybe leave back the Haunted Dead. And that can chump block. Oh, they just get the copy Chain Willer and kill the Silver Spoots, then exile with Hurst. Yeah. All right, all right, you and you. Would Hearst Exile stop the chill ability? Yeah, it would, it would. All right, oh, five. Big Sag, but I don't know, it was fun. I had a good time. Whenever we did win a couple of games, and when the deck went off, it did some pretty cool things. I do think that we can definitely make this quite a bit better with Fable the Mirror Breaker and potentially some other additions, like maybe you want more lands, go, go you know, um, make the deck a little bit more consistent that way, but... Uh, when you get to do the thing, it's pretty good. So, I don't know. Not bad. It was fun. It was fun. I had a good time. That's all that matters. I don't give a shit what my record is. I don't know if you knew this or not, chat, but your record at the end of a league literally doesn't matter. Your results don't matter at all. Did you have a good time? Yes. Who cares? And I had a good time. I don't know if chat did, but I know I had a good time. Okay, so next, Decorino. Let me get this in the extension real quick.